Okay, we're recording. Right, this is a change from the last eight weeks. So tonight is about uh, performance, your functional movement and your mobility and balance. So we're not doing heavy strength training session. It's all subtle movements that are all super beneficial for swim, bike and run. So tonight's focus is going to be mainly on hips, quads, psoas muscle. Um, and the reason for this is a lot of us are spending a lot of time seated in the day and we're spending a lot of time flex. So we're going to try and open up those muscles and get some more range of movement in there to help you in your position in the run and the bike. So as we go through, I'll explain what we're doing and why it's important. So we're just gonna start warming up. You're gonna need um, a kettlebell for some of the balance work, little dumbbells. If you've got a broomstick handy, that's great. A broomstick, you know what I mean, a long pole. It can be a walking pole um, just for one of the exercises, but it's not essential. So we're just gonna start with a bit of mobility work just to get you loosened off. So we're going to start with some leg swings, some hip mobility. Just turn the camera angle down. So standing on one leg. So all of the exercises tonight, we want to focus whenever we're on one leg is on making a tripod with your foot. So I want the heel, the big toe, the little toe and the glute engaged. So you're nice and stable. So we're just going to start swinging the leg through, mobilizing the hips. So I did this this morning pre-run and it made a massive difference to my run. It just started off as a good run right from the off, not with me walking out the door feeling stiff. So keep the chest up and open, a oh, bit of a wobble, core engaged, swinging that leg through. Couple more on this leg and then switch to the other side. So again, maintain that big toe contact the glute squeezing, good range of movement. Ooh, there was a bit of wobbling going on. Okay, then we're just going to take it across the body. So switch back to the other leg. And again, get that balance and swing through. Doesn't have to be a massive movement, so don't force it. Go with what's right for you. It's much harder to balance when that leg comes across. Ooh, let's have a look, change my eye line then. Okay, switch sides. So these next few weeks are focusing on what's going to benefit for you for your performance. So we're looking at loosening off tight bits. So it's all well and good getting a good bike fit. If you're super tight through the lower back, then that bike, bike fit could have been even better if you were looser. So it's just looking for those little changes we can make over these next few months to get you faster and more efficient for next season. Okay, Russ, I'm getting warm already. Okay, Frankenstein's, we've done these before. They're really good to do pre-run. So your arms are out in front and we're just bringing that leg up. Trying not to collapse through the upper body. About 10 reps. I've lost count, I think that's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then traditional knee hug to quad stretch. Always do this one, it's great for getting that hip area moving. So bring the knee up, grab it, again you're balancing, hug it in, nice and tall, squeeze this glute, take it round into your quad stretch, step forward. Ten of these. Up, squeeze and round. You can do it on the spot or you can do it walking. Three. Move through these quite quickly. Four. It's only half an hour tonight. Five. Six. Squeeze seven. Eight. Nine, and last one, 10. We're going straight into pigeon, which we've done lots before. If you've done these sessions, bring that knee up, grab it, hold the ankle, bring it across, lift up through the hips, feel the hip open and the glute stretch here. Same on the other leg, bring it up. Notice which side is tighter, where you might have some restrictions. 
Oh, that's a nice clip through my knee there. Keep it going. Up. Couple more. Then we'll just loosen up the upper body. And then we'll go into our first move. Okay, right, arm rotations, five back. Big circles, five forward. Get the coordination going with forward and back. Five in each direction. And then switch. Get some nice rotation going through. And then take it into some chest openers, straight ones. And then diagonal, couple on each side. Just opening it all out. And then if you can retract your shoulders down and back for me. Bring the arms up and then we're going to take the arms forward as far as you can. Bring them up, keeping their shoulder blades down and back. Take the hands back. Just feel where the tightness is. Forward. Open out back. Again, this one is quite hard sometimes to get the arms back because we're used to being forward all the time. Get rounded shoulders. This is just trying to See where you're at with that shoulder mobility once more. And then give it a shake out. Okay, right. First move, we are going to work through the scorpion. We're going to do it two ways. We're going to do the first scorpion lying on your back, so supine. So down we go onto your back. You can see me clear enough. My arms are out to the side. Back is nice and neutral. All you're going to do is bring that left leg up as far as you can. Take it across, tap the floor, bring it back up and down. And then we're going to alternate sides. So I want you to try it when you bring the leg up and swing it over to use your core as well. So arms out to the side. We're going to do 10 alternating. So core engaged, bring the leg up. Take it across. Try and keep your shoulder on the floor. You can't go all the way down, just go as far as you can. My left side's a bit stuck, so I can't get very far. Keep it going. Engage your core as you pull that leg back up. Across. And up. So we're activating hamstrings, core, glutes here and getting a nice rotation through the back, mobilizing. Couple more. One more. Come back to center, just give the knees a hug into the chest. I'm just gonna repeat that through once more. Okay, slide it back down, and see if you can get further with your movement. So shoulders anchored into the floor, core engaged, bring it up, take it across. Tap the floor, drive back up and down. So it's a nice dynamic movement. Keep it going. Seven, I think that is. One more. And ten. Okay, have the knees in, just release through the lower back. And then we're going to come up and we're going to go prone. You would have done this one before, I expect. So I've got my pole here just to use as reference. I'm going to have it underneath my chin. I'm hoping you can see me. I might come back a little bit. And I'm just going to stretch my arms out along. It's just a point of reference. I'm just going to bring the PC forward. Just make sure you're not missing any of this. So, scorpion again. So, we're really trying to open up the hip flexors, the psoas muscle, get it a stretch. So, we're nose down. 
You're gonna engage your core, squeeze your glute, lift that back, back leg up, bend it, take it across, try and tap the floor if you can, and bring it back over, change sides. Just keeping those hands on the floor as you go. We're gonna do 10 reps. Try and get a nice stretch. Comes all up the side of the body. Towards the armpit as well. Quite hard to get into that psoas muscle stretch there. Oh. <laughs> I'm noticing my shoulders lifting more on my left because the flexibility isn't there. So just take note of what you're feeling. You can't get quite as far over on one side. Do another two. Okay, just push back into child pose. You just gotta be careful with that one that you don't feel any pinching. Feel the lower back. If you do, just change the movement or just do the, the supine move. Okay, let's go one more set. Back down again. Nice flat position. Bring that leg up and over. Pressing those shoulders down. See so if you can get further than last time if the hips opened up a little bit. One set's generally not enough. You need to repeat it through. Give the body a chance for those muscles to stretch out. Okay, one more on each side. And then again, just take it back, release the back in case you've got any tension there. Release it back down. Okay. Right, you're done with your poles now. You can pop them out, out of the way. So we're gonna go into a low lunge now with an overhead stretch. Again, this is all focusing around getting a good range of movement through the hips, so opening out, getting that hip extension. So if your hips are really tight here, when you're running and you're hitting that power phase and you need to push off and extend, if there's restriction there, you're not gonna get as good push off, the power's not gonna be there. So we wanna try and make sure that this is so free and loose and you've got a good range that you can make the most out of your run stride. So a nice extension on the run stride and power equals faster pace and that is what we want. Right, we're going into low lunge now. So again, working through the hip flexors and we're gonna work up into a stretch again into the psoas and the side of the body. So you're gonna step forward into a low lunge to start with, hands are gonna come down into this position. So they're on the outside of my foot. I'm gonna squeeze down with this left glute and just push it down and just hold it there. So from the side, you've got a nice low lunge position. I'm really trying to push down here with the glute and rotate that pelvis under. And I'm already getting a nice stretch coming right up into the hip flexors. So just hold it there and breathe into it. See if you can settle into it a little bit deeper. You need to relax out of it and come back in, that's fine. So turn myself back round. Okay, and then what I want you to do is drop that knee down, come up into an upright position. So you can bring that foot in so it's underneath the knee. So from this position, tilt your pelvis under, bring your arms up to shoulder height, palms down, engage your core, squeeze your glutes. We're just going to rotate to the side that the leg is forward, just bring it across, see how far you can go. You should start to feel the stretch coming up. Keep the shoulders down, back to centre. And again, take it round. We do 10 of these. Keep that pelvis rotated under and the glutes squeezing forward. You need to just release it out and readjust, you can. This is all about range of movement through those hips, keeping them free. A couple more. 
We spend, spend so much time seated in the day and then we're folded over on the bike in that flex position. So if we can just improve that range of movement a little bit, we're going to improve our performance. One more. Come back to center, come out, just relax it. Okay. Next position, we're staying on this leg. We'll switch over when, we, when we've done this. We're going to assume that same position, rotate the pelvis under. So we've got a bit of a stretch. Take our arms straight up. Lift up through the core. Engage your core here. Pull it in, pull the glutes in. And then you're just going to take it into a lean, lifting up through here. Over. Feeling that stretch, just go as far as you can manage. Make sure that pelvis stays under. Feel any arching through the lower back and bring it up. Five of these. Reach over. Hold that stretch. Breathe out. Don't hold your breath. And back up. Over. Bring it back up with your core. One more. And back. Okay, let's switch those legs over. So back down, hands on the floor. Bring the other leg forward. Okay, drop that knee down a little bit. Push the glute down. Feel that stretch coming right up into the groin and the hip flexor. Take some breaths. Press the glute down. Squeeze it tight. And then we're just going to drop that knee down, come up, bring the foot in under the knee. Again, push that glute in, squeeze it tight, pelvis rotated, holding it there. You feel that stretch already, take a few deep breaths. Keeping it squeezed. Let's bring those arms up and we're going to rotate to this forward leg. We're taking it round. Feeling that stretch, back to centre. Round and centre. Couple more. Readjust your position if you need to. Does this side feel tighter than the other side? Just make a note. We're all a little bit unbalanced. Okay, back to centre, just readjust, arms straight up in the air, okay, engage the core, squeeze that glute, then take it straight over sideways, feeling that stretch, really pulling straight up from the hip into the psoas, keep that glute engaged. That's it, keep it going. Couple more. I've lost count. One more. And then come out of it. Okay, hands down. Just put push back up onto your feet and come up to standing. And give the legs a bit of a shake out. Grab a quick sip of water if you need to. Okay, so this is all about hip extension. Okay, mobilizing through the hip. Moving on to balance, some balance work. We spend so much of our time on one leg as triathletes. Lots of pressure going down all the time when you run, you need to be able to stabilize the pelvis area. You need to be able to balance. So that comes right down from the foot all the way up through the glutes. So we are gonna do some balance work now. Single leg, really straightforward. Standing on two feet, shoulders back and down, core engaged. On your left foot, find your tripod. So big toe, little toe, heel. Squeeze your glute. And all we're gonna do is come up onto one leg. Flex the foot, knee at hip height and change. So come up, hold the balance and just march that through. A little pause on each side. So keep that posture up, pull it up and down. So squeeze the glute, big toe, pushing into the floor, pull up and down. Keep marching that through. Notice if you're wobbling, 
on one side more than the other. Couple more. You're aiming for really stable hips at the front without any wobbling. So if I was to look at you from waist up, I wouldn't know what your legs are doing. They're coming up, pushing, foot up, pulling those toes up towards the shins, come back down. One more. Okay, right. Just making that a little bit harder, go grab your kettlebell or your dumbbell. I'm going to stand with it in one hand. Somebody needs to go on mute there. I can hear somebody. Shoulders back and down. Brace through the core. So what we don't want is any dropping of the ribs down. So when we run, sometimes we sink into the hips. So we're trying to hold this really tall. I want you to bring one foot up and then the other foot. Drive it up. Oh, that's so hard on that side. Pull up. Try to keep as stable as possible. I'm going to do 10 reps, holding that form, trying not to wobble, squeezing your glutes, big toe pressing into the floor on that supporting leg. Keep it going and we'll change the weight into the other hand. Okay, switch over. Shoulders back and down, core braced. Trying to not to let any wobbling happen. Let's go, march it up. Little movements, but super important for stabilizing that pelvis area. Doesn't feel like much, but these little muscles are really super important. If you don't work them and you're running, with poor form or you're sinking or you're overcompensating on one side, more likely to lead to an injury. So trying to balance yourself out and get those little muscles working is super important. And rest, okay. Right, one more stabilizing exercise to bring the arms in. So up on one foot again, same position, knee, hip height, foot flexed up, arms in the arm drive position. So we're gonna try and do 10 arm drives without falling over. So I've got my big toe pressed into the floor, my glutes engaged, my core's engaged. I'm gonna pump the arms, driving the elbow back, holding that steady form with a wobble. Woo. There you go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. That was harder than I thought. I might change legs. Okay, so shoulders back and down, core engaged, glutes tight. Big toe pressed into the floor, foot is up, let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One more on the other side again. That was a practice run. Shoulders back and down. If you want to make this harder actually on this round, this is where you can hold little dumbbells, but only if you've got your stability because it does make it a lot harder. So big toe, little toe, heel, glute, core, go. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's quite a little bit of movement going on in my lower body there. It's very hard to keep everything fixed. Last one on this side. Get the balance, glutes, core, drive. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> bit of a wobble there. Right, relax your legs up. Grab a quick drink. Oh, so you can practice those in your own time. They don't. They need to be done more than once a week, really. They're simple things that you can include that will make a massive difference to how you run and how you bike just by stabilizing through the, through the hips. Okay, we're going down now. A little bit of uh, glute work down on the mat. Don't need any weights for this. Just your bodies. We're gonna start with bridging with the march. So on your back, you wanna make sure that the lower back is pressed into the floor, nice and stable. Feet shoulder width apart. We're gonna come up into a bridge position using our glutes. So we're gonna push up to here. Hips are level. The aim is to keep these hips nice and level. Then we're gonna hold and march up. So this glute is contracting, keeping my hips level. 10 marches, let's go. 10. 
nine, eight, seven, takes concentration, six, keep everything squeezed, five, four, three, two, and one, peel down one vertebra at a time, have a little hug in to the chest, and then we're going to do that again. One more set. So plant the feet firmly, kind of shoulder width, hip width, hip width apart, somewhere comfy. Peel up using your glutes, press them up. You don't want to push so high that you're arching your back, so try and keep this nice and neutral. Get ready, squeezing everything nice and tight. Let's drive up. One, two, three, four, I can feel it in my bum muscles, five, everything's firing, six, to try and keep these hips stable, seven, eight, nine, and ten, and down. Okay, hug in again, we've got one more to do. Just single leg bridge raise. So we're up in that same position. We're going to drive up into our solid bridge position. The hips are stable. We're going to extend out the right leg. And we're just going to come down to the floor and then engage the glutes and drive up and back down. Let's go five on each leg. Three, two, one, and drive up and come down. Remember to breathe. Lost count, I think it's one more. Five reps, up and down. Okay, changing over, let's go five on the other side. So up into that bridge race, holding steady, hips are level, squeezing these glutes. Core is engaged, extend, come down and push up through that glute. One more. Okay, little rest. One more set on the other leg. Okay, into position. Get your foot where it's comfy. I keep getting mine in the wrong place and it's just cramping up the hamstring. So I need to make sure I fire this glute. Right, okay, up into bridge. Extend the leg and let's go down and up. One more, hand change, last set, peeling up into that solid position, extend the leg and let's go. One more, and relax. Oh, great, okay. That's enough of that, core and bridge. Right, we're gonna just do a little bit of plank work now with some running action in there. So we're gonna go tall plank on our toes, hands under the shoulders and the shoulders retracted back. So we're gonna go 10 running straight. Then we're gonna go 10 coming across and you can rotate on this one. I want you to try and aim the knee to the elbow. And then we're going to do 10 Spider-Mans and then we'll rest. So, get ready. Hands under the shoulders, shoulders back away from the ears. Solid plank position, glutes are tight, core is tight. Bring that knee towards the chest. Let's go. 10, 9, keep the bum down. 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one. Okay, knee's going to come across now and you can drop this hip and rotate, but keep the core engaged. And come across. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Last one. Ten. Back to strong position. Ten Spider-Mans. So bring the knee out to the side, keeping that core 
nice and strong and engaged. Go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Knees down. Take it back and just reach out the hands, head to the floor. Have a little relaxation, we are all done. 30 minutes. So we've covered off key stretches, for the hip flexors, psoas, quads in there as well. All about range of movement, getting the most out of your body as you can. If you're stuck, you're not gonna get into that optimum position on your bike. You're not gonna be able to deliver the power on the run because the leg extension is not gonna be there. So these are not things to be left out. So work these in to your warm ups. You can do that or half of it even before you go out on a run in the morning or when you come back as a bit of a cool down, you can still stretch out doing it. So every week we're gonna be targeting some different muscles, um, bringing in some upper body work for swimmers as well. So every week on a Tuesday, all about improving your performance. So I will see you all next week. Hope you enjoyed it. Feedback to your coaches. And I'll see you next week.